That's a scary moment, you know, especially in the end because I thought this is going to go completely wrong because that guy was going after my eyes the whole time during that fight. I don't know what his obsession with eyes were. See? It's a uh, fireman coming by. Oh, uh, are the cops after you, you boss? Yeah, what's going on, boss? What'd you do, buddy? No, no they're, they're, there's choppers hanging in the air here. Oh, Self, wow. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> I think they, 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 they found out I'm doing an interview. It's a picture of the Mohawk, and then, uh, and then I shaved it all off. So you're more low-maintenance over uh, looks? You know, it's, uh, t thankfully, I have the skull for it. So some people have, like, a cone head. No, you're you right. Know, and, yeah. it, it won't work. And, it, and it, I think... And, dude, when you... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, when you go in the shower, and you, and you just can wash your head with a, with a bar of soap, or you jump in the pool and you come out, then you know what real freedom is, guys. You got to remember, you, you're the Jackie Robinson of bald guys for white guys. You know that, right? Because that was the time. It wasn't really, you know, it wasn't really the norm. You know, Bruce Willis wasn't really that popular at the time. Now, I got a quick question for you. Famous bald guy of all time. You got to choose through the three. Billy Zane, Bruce Willis, or Patrick Stewart? Patrick Stewart. Let me see. What was it? Patrick oh, Stewart from Star guy. Trek. Engage. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I know Patrick Stewart, but I, 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 um, I have the other guy. Who was the other guy who played in in, in uh, Westworld? The old, the real Westworld, the old one. Um, what I, was his name? Ah, uh, I don't know. You got Hugh Brenner. Hugh Brenner. Hugh Brenner. All right, I got that. I, yeah, he was, he was a badass bald guy, and, and yet Kojak at the time. Those I'm, were the only Kojak, bald guys yep. he knew. Yeah, I'm more of a Telly Savalas kind of bald guy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Dallas Savalas was also good. Yeah, he was uh, nice. But, you know, you, like you said, it was frowned upon. Like, a lot of people were afraid of me because I shaved my head. It was uh, really weird. Nobody had it. I was pretty much the first guy there. Now, um, the now speaking of bald heads, we got a bald head uh, boxer coming up on August 26th, and he's going to be fighting a quite of a loudmouth Irish person. We got Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather coming up. You want to, boss, you want to tell us what you're thinking about that fight, uh, what your thoughts are? I think McGregor's going to knock him out. I'm going to shock the whole world. I'm, I'm one of those guys, and I know he's got only a 10 to 20% chance, but I'm, I'm going to go with his predictions. He said I'm going to do it within four rounds. Until now, his predictions came all the time. They, they came out. You know, I mean, I didn't expect he was going to beat Aldo uh, because Aldo is a phenomenal striker. He just knocked him out, and he actually said in the dressing room, they have video footage of it, Hey, I'm, this is what's going to happen. He's going to come straight at me. I will knock him out immediately. And boom, 13 seconds later, he knocks him out. His style is different. His stance is different. The way he throws punches is different. He's a southpaw. You know, he, he, on top of that, all the pressure is on Mayweather. M uh, McGregor has zero pressure. He's going to laugh himself all the way to the bank. I, I you agree. know, whatever yeah. happens, if he loses, he loses anyway. Everybody's going to expect it. But if he wins, that's a whole different ball game, and all that pressure is going to be on McGregor, uh, Mayweather because every single person will tell him, "Oh, it's going to be easy fight, dude. You're going to knock him out." And the more people say that, the more pressure this guy's going to have. He wants to be 50 and 0 instead of 49 and 0. So I, I, I got to go with McGregor. I just called it today. I started. I said, "You know what? McGregor's going to win. That's it. I'm going to." T. McGregor, that's you, it. You know what? That's the thing, though. When you surround yourself with nothing but yes men, like kind of like Mayweather has, he's got a bunch of yes men around him, and he's 40 now. And uh, Connor's in his prime at 28, and he's got that touch of death in his left hand. And at any point, I think it's kind of going to be a sloppy fight. I actually think the best part of the fights is going to be the, the buildup with the shit talk at the, uh, at the arenas exactly. over at Barclays. I mean, it's already great. I'm already watching it. It's my male soap opera for the summer. And watching these two guys verbally go back at it. But I don't think it's going to really make for the, the cleanest fight because you got a southpaw. Mayweather usually doesn't look clean against southpaws. Um, now, Mayweather's been boxing since he was very young. Conor McGregor, how do you decide or how do you pick between the boxing in MMA and the boxing in boxing? Because the, the, the volume of punches thrown is a lot less in MMA, correct? Yeah, it's, it's less, and especially against a, a guy like Mayweather, you have to watch out. You know, the guy's super fast. He's the best defensive boxer on the planet. So, you know, it's going to be very hard. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, pressure, man, pressure can do a lot of crazy things to fighters. And, 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 and a guy like Mayweather, it's all about him, 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 him. And my team money, team money, man, 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 man. it's all him. You know, burning $100 bills, and, and, you know, he wants to be constantly in the picture. And that's what he is. And, and now he doesn't realize it, but coming to fight day, 
that's going to be a lot of pressure. Now, can think, he deal I, with yeah. it? He probably can. Because, I think you know, I think Connor I has more heart. I think Connor has more uh, charisma. I think yeah. he want he's hungrier, and that's when it comes down to in a fight. And everybody that I've spoken to, everybody I hear online is saying Mayweather, Mayweather, you know Mayweather, and my money's on uh, McGregor. And I think just because of his skill set, what he's capable of, and where he can reach down real deep. And you're right. And Mayweather's not like that. Mayweather's about himself and his crew, and that's it. And he should make it the dark side. Like Mayweather doesn't do well against guys who, who bull rush him, you know, who, who make it a dark fight. And I, I think that's what uh, McGregor should do. I think McGregor's going to be bouncing or... back and forth, yeah, jumping in and out. And I think it's going to, you know, he's going to be like, what's uh, going on? I think that this could, this could bode for a possibly slow fight because you have two natural counterpunchers. If you look at Conor, Conor's not a – Connor isn't that go after an attack kind of guy. He waits for the guy to yep. throw a punch and then he bop. Well, what do you think, boss? Did you did you used to look at your opponents prior to the fight, obviously, and or get information and know I'm going to strike this guy, I'm going to drop this guy with leg kicks? Did you did you know usually prior to going in? Yeah, I you know I not really knowing, but you know with the combinations that I worked on, I I always was smart. I picked only a few combinations. I would drill, drill, drill over and over and over again, and yeah. those are kind of combinations that. When you throw him, it's going to work, you know, and yeah. and that's what he needs to do. Well, you kick somebody also. in the leg hard enough, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, Good. look at look at your match against Warpath. I mean, you yeah, just that's, I oh that. my yeah. god! I I literally what I thought was getting a leg kick from you. That guy had a chin. The guy the guy's got a chin, and 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 Boss is hitting him with bombs. He actually, I saw Boss's face at one point. He hit him so squarely, and Warpath just looked back at and him and, and came coming, and and Boss went what. You know, and now boss is like, right, okay, legs, leg kick time. Because <laughs> if you don't have any legs, you can't you can't wrestle, get, you, can't you can't punch. Yep. Uh, uh, just you want to touch on that real quick. That guy Warpath, man. I mean, he can eat a punch. You know what, what happened was that Don Fry called me two days before the fight, and he said he lost to the guy, and he told me that uh, that was the fight he had before, and he said. The guy has an incredible hard chin, and I said, "Well, I'm going to test it first. But I can't <laughs> throw, can throw real power anyway because I had a rip out. You know, I was oh, okay. training with uh, Dan Henderson at his team, and I I made a wrong move and I popped the rip out. So Oof. I couldn't train on the back for the last 12, 13 days. I only could shadow box. So I said, I'm going to try to hit him a few times, and if he indeed doesn't go down, I'll start low kick him, and, and if that doesn't work, I'll take his uh, butt down and I'll, I'll submit him. Right. So that was game plan number two. You know, I gotcha. hit him a few, and it was funny because the first time I hit him, he said, "Man, you're fast." And I go, "Oh, thank you." And then I connected full again, and he says, "Ooh, and you hit hard." I said, "Well, not hard enough. You're still standing." <laughs> yeah, hold on, this is the conversation you're having during the match. Together. That's amazing. You yeah. guys are just having this conversation. Yeah, we had this uh, conversation going on. He was a nice guy. <laughs> so, uh, well, you shook his hand. You know, you shook his hand when once he went down. So that goes to show you as well. Another thing, you know, how much you know honor you had and how how uh, professional you were in your fighting career. There's a lot of people that uh, can do some stuff but aren't as professional, especially nowadays with the younger generation. It is, you know, it, 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 I, I also never had that. When I knock a guy out, I, I don't like to give him an extra shot. And thankfully, I never had. I, you know, actually, I have to say, I did it one time, but I was, uh, oh, no, two times. But I was really angry at that time. So so that that's the only two times that I hit somebody. And, and, and it was legal what I did, but normally I wouldn't have done that. It was just because they, yeah, got me angry. I, I think one of my powers is that I'm I just completely calm. I, I don't know. It started in Japan for some reason. I mean, Thai boxing, I never had that. I was a very wild fighter, just destroy my opponents and knock them out. And in Japan, maybe it was the time that it was a 30-minute round, you know, one round that made me think, but, okay, maybe I shouldn't go full blast because, you know, if the guy survives for the first three minutes, they get 27 more minutes to go. So, you know, I, I became this really, a completely different fighter. It blew me away when I saw my fights back later i knew exactly what i did and how i did it and what i was thinking and i normally never had that in thai boxing but here i picked up conversations from people who were sitting ringside it was the wildest thing yeah the um also i i noticed that you do uh i mean after your career you set it up so you can be a commentator you got a great personality you're well spoken i uh, and i went to your youtube page um last night can you just give that to our listeners your youtube page name uh, official Boss Rudin. All right, Official Boss So, youtube.com slash Official Boss Rudin. Yeah, I, I was watching a bunch of the videos on there, and you just got some great stuff on there. Um, can you uh, maybe tell us one of your 
favorite interviews that you did with somebody in your personal career? Oh, it had to be uh, Shannon Lee, Bruce Lee's daughter. That oh, wow. was uh, that was really cool. Yeah, because you know what? I jumped on that right away. They said, "Hey, we got Shannon Lee." I said, "Me, me, 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 me." I want to interview her, and, and <laughs> she uh, she allowed me. I, oh man, she showed me his desk. I was sitting behind his desk. She That's showed cool. me the secret drawers that he had, secret compartments in the desk. She showed me her little his little notebooks. He was very know, with spiritual, all his right? Notebooks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, crazy! Thousand finger punches, thousand kicks, thousand sit up, thousand. I mean, everything was a thousand. And then wow. training, uh, you know, uh, uh, Elvis training him. Training, you know, I mean, he was training also a lot of famous <laughs> hey, people. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Uh, yeah. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Imagine getting a chest kick from Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Well, and the uh, stair. Oof. What was it? The stairway to uh, stairway to death, or I forget the movie. Uh, but uh, yeah, he fights uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar in that movie, and Kareem Abdul Jabbar is blind. Yeah. Yeah, Game of Death. Game of Death. Thank you very game much. Of death. You know, Boss knows the name of it. Boss, what reminds me, uh, just speaking of action movies and martial arts movies, like every time I see Jean-Claude Van Damme, like I think he wishes to be you. you like you, you are. Love, you love him. You like, I, I love Jean-Claude Van Damme. His movies are corny. But I think that like you're the real Jean-Claude Van Damme. Like the, the in non, real life, in real life, like the non douchey version, the the actual cool version of Jean Claude. Yeah, that can actually kick. Yeah, he really did it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? There's always this. I have to say with him, um, the the Universal Soldier. I, there was a last one he did also <laughs> um, with the Mike Pilot in it. No, but I was, I was, I I truly liked his acting. He he grew as an actor, and I go, man, he's it's actually. Pretty decent this movie, and, and Mike uh, Mike Pyle was in it. Uh, one of the guys I know, a fighter, and he did a phenomenal job. He had a big part in that as well. Well, you had so, a um, you had a huge part in uh, Here Comes the Boom with uh, Kevin James. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was my my biggest part till date. Yeah, uh, and what I, a movie, man! What, 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 a, what my, a way to yeah. To, to, to yeah to meet uh, the fans and, and Salma Hayek. You know, it, it was a great time. I, I thought it was great, and not only that, I thought you got a tremendous amount of uh, screen time. It was, it was, yeah, it was one of the starring roles. So uh, you know, I, I couldn't believe it when he sent me the script. He says, "You're Nico," and I'm reading, and I'm seeing, I'm, I'm in the in the citizenship class, and I thought, "Oh, that that's, <laughs> that's right, yeah. probably going to be my part." <laughs> and then suddenly, I come back out of the citizenship class, and then I go, "Oh, here I'm again and again and again," and then suddenly I became a strainer. I go, "Whoa." There's a big part. He didn't tell me that, you know. I just thought it was a, a part somewhere. Hey, boss, uh, you obviously um, are sharp as a tack. How did you, a lot of guys that have gone through what you've gone through, the battles in the ring, aren't as lucky as you to be as cognitive. Uh, what, how do you think you got so lucky? <laughs> I, I, I think it's uh, what you set out to do. I, 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 you know, you have to prepare everything. Like when I moved to America and I was still fighting, I, I was within three months I was in America, I was already taking acting classes. I knew that it was a, that's a profession, that you have to treat it like a professional and you have to start studying and you have to rehearse and do it in front of people. You know, it's, it's a lot of pressure, man, when, you, uh, when you're an actor. And especially when you're on the set, uh, every, every take you mess up on a big movie, that, that's $25,000 just down the drain. You know, it, it goes really fast, the money. So I figured, you know what, let's be prepared here. So you never know if it happens, you know, because it was still... In, up in the air, I didn't know if uh, if I was going to make it, but uh, slowly but surely. And, w and what helped also is, of course, commentating, doing it live. You know, so do, do, doing a live show in the in the middle of the show, a live break, and you have to talk about the fight that go on, and you have to you, you give your two cents, and you can't mess up there. And and once you start getting under that pressure, and you have to do it all the time, you get used to it, and that of course is going to help you with fighting as well, or with acting. Absolutely, <clears throat> preparation is everything. Uh, boss, I have a question for you. Uh, it's a two-part question, actually. The first part is, uh, what was uh, your favorite fight um, of all time of your career, or or not of your career, sanctioned or unsanctioned? I don't know if you had anything unsanctioned. And secondly, uh, if there was anybody that you didn't get to fight, that you always wanted to fight, either now, today, somebody that fights now, Conor McGregor, or somebody that fought prior to you, uh, I'd like to know the answers to both of those questions because that's something I thought about. Okay, well, the first one, the first answer is uh, my, my rematch against Funaki Mazakatsu. I, I really like that. It was for the title. I already had the title. He was the first guy who beat me in Pancras yeah. in my third fight, and then they gave me to him on as the last fight under my contract, thinking he will beat me again. 
and that would help them with the, the contract renegotiations. But Correct. I was a completely different animal there. Now I knew the ground. Now I submitted more people than I knocked them out. So, yeah. you know, so when I fought and he made the mistake, he walked up to me in the ring and he slid his throat, you know, with his thumb. He did it right in front of my face. Yep, and I, I go, oh, yeah. you're going to go, dude. You're going <laughs> to go. And, and, and it just affects. You know that he, I mean, he came up four times until the final knee. I grabbed him by the hair and drilled my knee in his face as hard as I could. That, that's when he stayed down. But, dude, for him, the Japanese will say the same thing. It's for him his best fight, and it was for me one of my best fights. And I heard that, the, not only that, the Japanese people loved you, by the way. That's, I mean, you know, that's, that's what's out there on the web. Oh, you, they, you know, that's the crazy thing in Japan. You know, you come in as a, as a foreigner. And you knock out a, a, a Japanese guy. That what that happened to first fight, and people are cheering and autographs, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a couple put a baby in my hand. And you know, I, I'm that guy. I just came from Holland. I, I'd never been on a plane. I fly to Japan, 13 hours. You know, in a completely different country. And then after the fight, you know, people are celebrating and put a baby in my hands. And the next awesome. day, people bowing to me on the street. Yeah, like one every ten people, they would suddenly uh, they would bow. Yeah, great. It was the respect. craziest thing. Yeah. Now, who would, who was the person that you would want to fight uh, that maybe you didn't get to or, or somebody that you always wanted to? Uh, you know, at the time, it was Hicks and Gracie. And, and just for the fact that he's such a phenomenal ground fighter, and I, I, re I just wanted to test my skills. Everybody was always going, oh, you don't like him, you don't like him. I said, dude, I love this guy. That, that's why I want to fight him. He's so, so good and fast on the ground. I just want to see that if it goes to the ground, if he could submit me. I would just, uh, that was just a wish that I had, but uh, unfortunately, it never happened. Okay. Yeah, so uh, basically getting back to uh, one of your other fights, um, one, one of your favorite things to do is open palm strikes, and I think that, what, did they, like, basically outlaw those in UFC once uh, I think you retired because of how many people you retired? Because one of your videos that I watched, you're striking people behind the neck with open palms and, and basically knocking them out. And uh, I thought it was one of the coolest yeah. things. Now, why do you like to hit with open palms? You, you want to, okay, the, first of all, it was a rule in Japan. You, you were not allowed to hit with a closed fist. It was kind of a rules they had adapted for the Japanese fighters. Okay. They're really good submission fighters. So they say, oh, let's give them shoes, knee protection, shin protection. And then so they, you know, it, it will dull the kicks and the impact. And gotcha. then with the open hands, that will be great for them. And, and leg locks, I mean, with shoes on. That's going to be really great for them as well. So I was kind of forced into that situation. Well, what they didn't know was that I was fighting as a bouncer with open hands because I saw my buddies break their hands on people's skulls because if you have a brawl and there's a lot of people fighting, well, you can't really aim. You just aim for the head, you know. It's not like, oh, that's his job because you're fighting multiple guys. So they broke their hand and another guy broke his hand. I go, you know what, I'm not going to break my hand. I'm going to just stop palm striking them. And then I realized if you hit him behind the ear, <laughs> that's uh, that's that's the the touch of death. People people <laughs> drop. So once I went to uh, Japan and my opponent, my first opponent was like six three. He was a very uh, big, tall Japanese guy, two hundred forty five pounds. But because he was taller, I palm strike him underneath the jaw, and uh, and he went down. And, yeah, he got <laughs> up, and then an eight count, and then I yeah I I did a little bit too hard. It wasn't very scary. He spent two days in the hospital. He didn't uh oh, geez. didn't have a lot of. Uh, he didn't talk for two days, let me tell you that. Hey, boss, scary. tougher fight, Ken or Frank Shamrock? It will be Frank because, you know, it's, it, Ken, I always wanted the, my final fight. Ken, Ken was the catalyst. He, he was the guy who made sure that I started focusing on my ground game. The last fight I lost was against Ken, and it pissed me off so bad that I started focusing on the ground, and I got, in, I, I got obsessed by it suddenly. It got me. I got the bug. I, I mean, I... I always tell this story. Like, I, I will wake up my wife five, uh, at least six, seven times I did it in the middle of the night because I would dream a submission. I would wake her up. I put her in the submission. I would ask her where to work, you know. During the Are day, you guys still the married? same thing. The whole house, little post-its, notes with combinations. You know, and it worked. I won my next eight fights by submission. Nice. So I never lost a fight anymore after that. Dude, no. all so I can I think about is you waking up your wife in a full Nelson. A full Nelson. Yeah. How's this, hon? <laughs> Oh my God, that's amazing! Yeah, no, the full Nelson, I never did that, but uh, you know, and, uh, it's kind of a kimura, a leg lock, and you know, it, it's all <laughs> all things that pop up, or you know, hey, honey, lean over, and then I would put her in a guillotine <laughs> choke, and then I said, hey, is this? That's are you funny. getting dizzy or do you feel pain? She and thinks she goes, you're trying to make the moves. Said, okay, good, it's a blood choke. Good, it's working. 
Um, what are, one of uh, didn't you get an honorary, uh, well, a fifth degree uh, belt in your ground game at one point uh, during one of your wins after a fight? Yeah, what happened was the day before the fight, we have this giant screen uh, in, in the middle of Tokyo. Where we're passing it, and we hear this voice saying "Hybrid Wrestling Pancras." So we know that's our our organization. We look at the screen. And the first thing we see is me knocking out that guy that I just talked about, my first fight. Right. <laughs> so we go like, whoa, it's a preview for tomorrow, right? So we're watching the preview, and I see a guy sitting in half guard, and he grabs a leg, and he falls backwards, and he heel hooks him. And I look back, behind me is uh, John Blooming. John Blooming is the 11th degree black belt under Masoyama. So Masoyama had 12 black, uh, belt, uh, belts, he had 11. Okay. He was the highest. Uh, the guy on the planet. And so he stands behind me and I look at him and I say, wow, that's a cool move. I got to remember that for tomorrow. So the next day I'm fighting, I'm in that position and I go, oh, I might as well try it out. So I try it, but since I never did it, I had no clue how much pressure I would put on the guy <laughs> and I broke a shin bone in half. Ah, geez. Yeah, yeah, and, that, yes. And, and that's when I realized, oh, wow, this submission game is actually pretty violent. You know, it's, uh, it's a scary thing. It's but serious, this, yeah. the, the guy, John Blooming, he told me, dude, you told me yesterday that you were going to try it out in a fight, and now you win your fight with it. So that's why they gave me the honorary fifth degree. That's awesome. Now, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of your fights, um, one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest clips from one of your fights is with Frank Shamrock, where you guys both go out the ring. Yeah, we both, you, we, we showed that actually when we <laughs> went at the, the, the athletic commission. You know, they showed that clip and they, they, to the Athletic Commission to see if they could get MMA legal here. They said, this is what can happen in a, in, a, in a ring, and that's why we have a fence, you know. So, and, and, and the space in a cage, it's so big, you know, and there's no corners. Nobody can lock you up in the corner. So, for me, when I stepped in there for the first time, the day before, I go, man, this is going to be fun. I mean, nobody can lock me up. There's a lot of space. I can, I can run away if I like. Yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you get back in the ring and do that? I mean, how bad was the fall? Oh, it, <laughs> it, it wasn't bad because I landed on Frank. Frank <laughs> broke my fall. I made sure of that. You know, I made sure that I didn't slip around. <laughs> well, I saw you striking him prior to that, and that's why he pushed you out. Because basically, you were giving him so many palm strikes upside the head, he didn't know what else to do. Yeah, that that that, that went a little crazy, right? We just uh, flew oh, I, out. I love that it. I've watched thing. that fight probably about ten times at this point. When when you roll him back and he gets up and he smiles and he puts his hands in the air and everybody starts cheering, I mean, that, that's what it shows. That's what a fight's about. So, boss, what I do on a regular basis is I use you in UFC two on Xbox One and I give right. shin kicks to the nose to my brother and I just <laughs> knock him out. He is he is not. Beaten me with I Boss try, Rutten I tried yet. He's about seven and zero oh against uh, against my brother. So I just want to let you know, virtually you're doing good, and in the real life you're doing well. Man, this is crazy. I win everywhere. This yeah, is yeah, even even do. the fake boss is winning. What, <laughs> who, who's uh, did you sell your soul to the devil, boss? Is the next question. No, I'm a big. I'm a devout Catholic. I would never. You know, hmm. it's uh, I, I do everything in my power to keep that guy away. The animal. <laughs> Well, listen, man, we really want to thank you for coming by. We really appreciate you taking the time out. Um, you just want to tell us fans what you have coming up, uh, any special uh, projects we, you got yeah, coming you up? Yeah, you in any movies or anything like that? Well, on NBC, we're going to have the Professional Fighters League at the end of the month, the 29th, I believe, of July. So I'm going to go to that. It's, I believe it's in Mich Michigan where I'm going to do the commentating. And then the, the craziest thing happened, you know, when I came to America, they asked me what I want to do. Do you want to be in movies or TV? I always said TV. And they said, what is your wish? And I said, my wish would be that I would be on an American sitcom, on a comedy sitcom. And my wish came true. <laughs> in August, I start shooting Kevin Can Wait, which is the number one sitcom right now on TV. I did four episodes last season, and now they want me to be a person who shows up all the time. So I'm going to... Congratulations! Move, uh, probably Good for you. well for a while to Long Island. Well, uh, listen, we're out on Long Island as well. Stop by uh, anytime. We're two Long Island guys. Uh, we definitely know Kevin James went to Ward Melville High School. That's close to us, and uh, that's actually kind of why we like Kevin James so much because he is a Long Island dude. I'm also a stand-up comedian, and uh, the guy tells it how it is. You guys are close friends off the set too, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know Kevin twenty years. I know Kevin within five months when I arrived in the states. He found out I'm here. I was here, and he and Joe Rogan used to watch all the Pancras fights on pay-per-view. So, you know, his management called me. That was the first season of The King of Queens at the time. Yeah. I remember visiting him in his one-bedroom apartment that he shared with his brother. 
So that's how far this is, uh, how long this is ago. And uh, the great thing about Kevin is that he is exactly that same guy as he was at the time. This guy never changes. He's also not one of those comedians. You know, a lot of comedians are up and down, right? It's like a roller coaster. They're very yeah, depressed yeah, yeah. Positive, outside. Depressed. And once they go on yeah. stage. Yeah. But this guy, man, he is, makes, if you sit with him, just breakfast. I mean, there's, there's, I bet it's he loves stop. It's yeah. like he cannot turn it off. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, did you say he can't have enough at breakfast? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, you you can't have enough of this guy. I mean, it constantly the jokes come out. He's, he's his, his stand up is joke. yeah. His stand up is phenomenal. He's from you know he's homegrown from us, so that's why we love him. And you know that's why we watch all his movies. And like I said, you were great. And here comes the boom. You know. Well, boss, do you ever think about maybe Thank doing a uh, kind of like a uh, uh, like you know like a talk show or a uh, something maybe like late night format where you can really be yourself? I think that would be a good. Well, format he said for you. sitcom. He wanted to do a sitcom. sitcom. And he's getting what he's getting his wish. Boss, do the sitcom and then do the late night show. They need you. Yeah, so you could definitely do like some late night show or something. Like that. that would be something, you know. And that's a lot of work, you know. Every no, absolutely. Single night, yeah. I don't know. Preparation. But, Boss, listen, you can always fall back on the fact that if you don't like the guests, you can kick them in the head. <laughs> boss, thank you very much for coming by. We appreciate it. You're very welcome, guys. Thanks, God Boss. Peace. Nice talking to you. God bless. Yo. Well, thank you for joining us here, guys, a New York Minute Sports Podcast. Uh, really appreciate you guys listening. You can follow us on Instagram at New York Minute Sports. That's N-E-W-Y-R-K-M-I-N-S-P-O-R-T-S. And you might be listening now on Spotify. We also are on SoundCloud and on YouTube at New York Minute Sports. And that's also N-E-W-Y-R-K-M-I-N-S-P-O-R-T-S. You can see us on Instagram with live updates. We have a video show twice a week, and we also have our podcast. There's going to be a bunch of great interviews coming out with Jake the Snake Roberts and Dan the Beast Severin and even the Jerky Boys. So we like to keep it light here. But uh, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. Listen, hey, dude, let's let's stop this. You know, I'm going. I'm leaving. Don't worry about it. And the guy behind him jumped over him, and he stabbed a finger in my eye. I go, guys, I don't want any trouble. And then he hit my other eye. And that's when I knocked him out. And then all hell broke loose because then of three other bouncers came, was fighting five guys. You know, and it's hard because you're dropping them, but they wake up while you're fighting the other guy, so you're constantly busy, you know. That's a scary moment, you know, especially in the end because I thought, this is going to go completely wrong because that guy was going after my eyes the whole time during that fight. I don't know what his obsession with 